What is up YouTube and welcome to this Invincible Episode 5 Breakdown Recap and Review. The season continues on being one of the best superhero TV shows on TV and this I would say is the best episode yet. While it has explored the cosmic and major threats that these heroes fight against, well this is something I wish the MCU and DC would do by unshackling their vision and really going ham with the source material. Invincible however slows down this episode and shows the lives of those that these heroes are working to protect. It puts Invincible in that street level hero situation like Daredevil compared to someone like Superman stopping a galactic threat or planet ending threats. But we open with Titan played by Marshara Ali. We apologize if I have butchered that name there as he shakes down a warehouse of criminals. He destroys everyone and can encase his body in rock and he's seemingly a bad guy with a heart as he lets a kid live and the theme of not judging a book by a cover and rematches too are the theme of this episode as Mark defeats a guy he fought a few episodes ago and he even fought Titan a couple of episodes ago as well. Mark is yet again late to see Amber, and we see Titan burn down a house but give some people some money to get a room, as Mark also fights and saves people, yet their apartment is ruined, showing the hypocrisy of heroes and people perceived as villains with Titan. But Mark does get to do the superhero stuff, like be shown by his dad how to stop a meteor, while Titan extorts people for money, abusing his powers, but lets the guy live as he has kids and gives him more time to get the cash that his boss wants. We even see Mark interrogate someone just like this, showing how they are the same, but they just have very different life stories. Titan steals a chip from a lab and lets people live. Clearly he's not doing this to be evil, but he's just caught in a bind. And yet again, Mark stands up Amber as throughout the course of the episode, their friendship is strained and Mark's real life persona seems to go from bad to worse as he quits work and is in trouble at school. We also learn how Titan is working for Machine Head, a daft punk auto-tune villain from the comics who has Titan over a barrel and Titan is in debt as he has to work for him as there's no way out. The auto-tune part I found, yeah, that wasn't that funny and I feel like the whole auto-tune thing hasn't been kind of funny for years. He gives him a chip that allows him to see every potential outcome of, well, anything except the ending of this episode, which I thought was pretty weird. But Mark has seemingly stood up Amber for almost the last time and she forgives him as he always makes it up to her despite awful excuses. And he has to actually duck out again as his dad calls him for more training. Now there was a lot of nuance this episode and I can't help but still think that the Amber storyline really is the weakest, especially when everything is so interesting. We see Titan's family as he talks to his wife and she realizes they are not getting out of this life. And he talks to his daughter about heroes and he gets an idea where we see Vincible fight Elephant, which was a really cool continuity shot, which the continuity in this episode and the show is just really, really good. Now we also have a payoff almost of last week where Debbie sees Dark Blood's book and starts to follow the leads realizing that her husband might indeed be guilty as she finds his costume that was damaged when he actually fought the Guardians and later in the episode Eve's parents are incredibly toxic to her when we see them coddle her and imply she needs to be looked after even though she's got absolutely ridiculous powers and even want her to forgive Rex despite him actually cheating on her, she leaves. Hey, I don't really blame her. But Titan then leaves a note for Invincible and wants his help. Just like the comic, Invincible does think that he's here to cause trouble, but it's a bit different as in the comics, Titan was helping clean up after an alien invasion where Mark thought he was gonna cause trouble. I love how we have the dynamic between Mark and Titan as they've both lived different lives and Mark has no idea who Machine Head is or what is going on at the street level because he's working up there in the sky. This is the chance to see the other side as he is shown Machine Head's impact on society as he sees Machine Head's drug trade and how it affects each part of society. Now Titan took money for his daughter as our boy Mark heads home and his dad thinks street level stuff is beneath him except his mother knowing Nolan is sus says how helping anyone isn't below him. 
We catch up with the Guardians who debrief after fighting King Lizard and Rex thinks he's all above them as he's rude to Robot as Samson dissects the mission as he's had enough of these kids because of course he was on the Guardians before he lost his powers and shows how they don't work as a team and just work to do some cool stuff but Rex only cares about the end goal as they almost killed a whole busload of people. The story is pretty cool and we even see the Maulers and Robot team up to clone a body of Rex for his own gain so Robot can have a body which is a nice little slow burner story across each of the episodes. All the while Mark is actually forced to help out a community center and even volunteers to help with Amber and Eve. I, except I like how Mark is doing his own community service as he doesn't actually make it there as he agrees to help Titan and they go to fight Machine Head. The burst in except Machine Head knew exactly what was going on due to the chip in his head and Isotope dips his handy lackey just as hired guns appear to defeat Titan and Invincible as just Mark is left to the brunt of the battle and Battle Beast and his co-advances. Battle Beast used to be the planetary guardian like Alan, but of his own planet, and he became addicted to battle and came under Machine Head's employment under promise of fighting top warriors of Earth. Battle Beast looked really, really cool, and Beast smashes him in as the Guardians turn up from a tip-off, I presume is Titan, as they fight the mercenaries, but get defeated due to them not working to their potential, and it only takes them almost being defeated a Monster Girl and Samson or being what I thought was killed at the time to work as a unit. I thought this was really cool and this story is well written here as we see the parallels of each character. With them defeated, Machine Head is taken into custody and clearly didn't see this coming as Cecile takes his chip and medics look after the injured as we learn it was Titan all along. Just like the comics, he engineered it all to take over the crime empire but says that he actually wants to do things better and Mark's friends and family get the call he almost died. This was easily the best episode yet and has a lot of nuance and fresh takes on comic book TV and well despite it being street level being kind of boring at times I thought this was really really well written and the lessons learned here were many for a naive Mark and I love this show and I can't overstate how much I think this is a brilliant TV show and I think a few people are overlooking it due to that it's being animated but that's a whole other thing but that's it for this video please do drop a like down below please do subscribe with notifications on and let me know what you think of the episode in the comments I'll see you soon and goodbye